Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with complex numbers. So we have a complex number z whose natural log equals pi plus pi i. Such a nice number, right? A very irrational complex number. Wait a minute, can complex numbers be irrational? No, not really because that's basically true for real numbers, but some complex numbers are real. This one isn't. Okay, so how do we solve something like this? I'll be presenting, at least I will attempt to present two solutions because I haven't tested out my first solution yet, but I'm thinking it should work. Okay, so that'll be more natural because I don't have a script for this. So, First method is going to do what is very typical for this channel, and that is replacing z with a plus bi, okay? When you replace z, z with a plus bi, you're basically saying that, okay, z is a complex number, so right, or let's write it as a complex number. So from here, we get the following, ln a plus bi equals pi plus pi i. So bear with me because I think the first method is pretty interesting, and if you disagree, please let us know. If you agree, also let us know. Always let us know what you think, okay? Great, so let's think about the natural log of a complex number. How do you ln a complex number? I mean, you probably know how to ln e, right? Ln e is one, ln e squared is two, ln one is zero, those are easy. Ln 10, I don't know, use a calculator, whatever. But what is ln a plus b i, or what is ln one plus i? That's kind of like a weird number, right? But luckily, we have a definition or formula for complex logarithm. But you gotta remember, the log of a complex number is multi-valued. Depending on your choice of the branch cut or whatever the argument, you'll get a different answer. Okay, just keep in mind that we can always stick to this principal value because that is the most principal value. Okay, if you wanna stick to your principles, Use the principal value. So let's do that. How do you ln a plus b i? Here's how you do it. ln a plus b i can be written as ln of absolute value of a plus b i plus i times the argument of a plus b i. And again, some people say, claim that if you write the argument arg with a capital A, it, it's meant to use the principal argument. I'm not exactly sure if it's universal, I would probably avoid it, or maybe it's accurate, whatever. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. What is the absolute value of a plus bi? You know that, right? The square root of a squared plus b squared. So to find the, the natural log of a, I mean, to find the absolute value of a complex number, you basically square the real and imaginary parts and add them up and then take the square root of the result. Great. What about the argument though? Hmm. Depending on the coordinate system, like the quadrant which you're in, this may change, but I just want to use a basic version. An argument, I'm going to write it as 10 inverse, or I could probably use arc tangent of b over a. This is not always going to work. For example, you may take arc tangent b over a, which is also going to be positive in the fourth quadrant, but then you kind of have to adjust your angle because the range of the arc tangent function uh, is limited. So in order to make it a function or invertible function, they had to uh, restrict the uh, range, okay? Which is the basically the domain of the tangent function. Anyways, so. This one can be written as the a, a squared plus b squared to the power one half. So we can kind of bring this one half to the front just to make it a little nicer. You know, you don't want to have the radical. It just bugs me. I don't know how you feel about it. And then this arc tangent is just going to stay there, right? I don't think we can do anything about it. But then we're going to set it equal to the right hand side, which is pi plus pi i. Nice. You know why this is so nice? Because we can compare the real parts and the imaginary parts. Guess what? This is the real part. So this should equal pi. And this is the imaginary part that should also equal pi because we have a complex number whose real part equals its imaginary part. Like 
1 plus i or any multiple of 1 plus i. By the way, you could also write this as pi times 1 plus i. I don't know if that would be helpful. But you could do that, obviously, right? Great. Maybe that could be another method. So now, by comparison, what are we getting? First of all, our tangent b over a is pi, which is nice. And then from here, we get, if you tan both sides, tangent pi equals b over a. Hmm, that's interesting. What is tangent pi? What is tangent zero? Isn't that zero? Tangent pi is also zero, right? If you think about it, how do you find the tangent? Well, on the unit circle, you draw the unit circle. Sine and cosine, you probably know. But if you draw a tangent line and kind of consider this value, because that's a coordinate value, by the way. It's not length because it could also be something like this, right? You're going to read off the kind of like the y value on the tangent line. That will give you the tangent. So this would be tangent theta. In the first quadrant, obviously, it's positive. In the fourth, it's negative. Make sense? That's why it's below the x-axis. So if theta is pi, its tangent is going to be zero. Wow. Amazing, right? Okay, great. This means b is zero, and of course, a should not be zero, right? Because zero over zero is not zero. <laughs> zero to the power of zero is one, by the way, but anyways, that's a different discussion. I already talked about it. So b equals zero, and then if you plug it into the other one, what was the other one? One half ln a squared plus b squared equals pi. But we already know b is equal to zero, so why not plug it in? One half ln a squared equals pi. Bring this two to the front. Uh, two times one half times ln a is equal to pi. And then ln a is pi, or so a is equal to e to the power pi. Right? Did we get that right? Hopefully. Now, <laughs> hopefully we didn't make any mistakes. But here's one thing. How do we know that A is, what was the word? Positive, right? I mean, can A be negative? Probably, why not? And I think that's gonna be more clear when we get to the second method. Let me leave it at that, and I'll talk about the second method real quick. So you get the idea? A, B is zero, so Z is supposed to be e to the power pi, but do you think the solution is correct? Because we did not consider the absolute value. I mean, here, even if a was negative, this could still be maintained. So in other words, whenever you have ln a squared, it's better to write it as 2 ln absolute value of a. So I think I would be safer if I used absolute value of a equals this, right? Anyways, you can figure it out. Let's talk about the second method. Because the second method is really cool. If notability allows me to write. Okay, so second method, ln a plus bi is equal to pi, oh, come on, what's happening? Plus pi i, okay? So why not use e? So put both sides on e to the power, do e to the power both sides, and then we're going to get e to the power ln a plus bi is just a plus bi, and then this is going to be e to the pi. Let's go ahead and separate these two things, e to the power pi times e to the power pi i. Uh-oh. This is just negative 1. How do I know that? Because this is a complex number in polar form. And as you know, pi is the argument for negative 1, right? You see that? So then this becomes negative 1 times e to the pi. So a plus pi, which is our z, becomes negative e to the power pi. But we did find positive e to the pi because we made an assumption. So are we able to go back and fix it? please let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Excuse me. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.